Hey, so today we're gonna be doing a hip drop. And we're doing this move because sometimes I find that this one is actually harder to activate in the body and it doesn't come as naturally. And the hip drop I'm talking about is our beloved inspired Soherzaki move where we're in releve and dropping the hip, yeah? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, a lot of the time this is actually hard to just kind of get into if you're not able to just do it flat foot and know how to activate the body as you are evenly weighted. As you start to go onto each foot, you have a better indication of where your weight will lie as you push your hip into the ground and you feel that increased pressure on your feet. However, we want to start off right here because the agility of your hip is super important to be able to do this move uh, very cleanly. So we're going to have our nice, beautiful, neutral position. And when we do this move, we want to be able to access our hips a bit. So make sure you allow this nice soft bend in your knee as you drop the hip. So take your hands and push them on your hip right here. You're gonna push your left side down and then your right side down. And you wanna feel it push down versus pulling up to activate the opposite hip. This is really important because I find that, especially beginning students, they tend to do the opposite because it may be more natural to do, right? So we wanna make sure you push, 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 feel that oblique work right here in your muscles. So you're gonna go down, 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 down. Right now, your weight is evenly distributed between the two and you may feel a slight pressure difference when you actually work the hip down on top of it. But what you wanna do in this position is really pay attention to the power behind the hip drop, yeah? So you want drop, drop. Drop, drop, and faster, one. So you wanna think about that side of your body lengthening each time you drop the hip from the side. And back. Drop, 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 drop. Doom, doom. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, make sure to keep neutralizing your tailbone so you don't hurt your back, yeah? Okay, so even though we're doing this move when we are flat-footed, how does it transfer when we go into releve and do this move? Well, as I've been teaching for a long time now, I've noticed that actually going from here and straight into this doesn't always happen so seamlessly. So what ends up happening is either we switch to a hip lift, we get this like, block movement instead of this isolation. So it's really important that you understand how it feels in your body to actually extend your hip down and pull it towards the ground. Another thing that you can do is literally lay on the ground. So I'm gonna lay on the ground here. You can literally lay on the ground and as you're laying here, you're gonna push your hip away from you. This is really important. So you can push your hip away and what that's telling you right here, you would actually lay all the way back. I'm just trying not to crush my microphone. So as you push all the way down on that side and then push the opposite side, you actually become more aware of the muscle in your body right here of the one that you actually have to activate as you push your hip down. So that exercise is really good for awareness. It's not necessarily a drill to increase agility. However, it's good for you to be aware of what muscles you're using here. The easy, one of the easiest ways, and it's gonna get a little cheesy for a moment here, one of the easiest ways I found to actually get into the Soherzaki or the hip drop and releve movement is to kind of go big body movement and then narrow it down into the isolation that we have. So although we can do this move in place when we get into releve, the technique changes, right? Okay, so I'm gonna have you do this with me. We're gonna look funny for a moment, but that's okay. I literally want you to be like a Barbie doll. You know how Barbie's legs can't uh, bend, right? I want you to kind of lock out the straight of your leg, but not lock your knee. Just lock the position it's in here, yeah? And all I'm gonna have us do is actually this. I know it looks weird. I want you to just allow your entire body to bounce back and forth. 
You're gonna keep on the ball of your foot, so that way you don't slam like this, right? Keep on the ball of your foot and allow your foot to melt into the ground, but you're gonna seesaw back and forth. Boom, 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 arms up. Yay! <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Now, our feet are a little bit wider. I'm doing this on purpose. Our feet are a little bit wider than our hip, right? Even shoulder or maybe a little bit past your shoulders. If you're anything like me, I'm feeling it in my calves and my hamstrings and even my butt right now, which is awesome. Extra workout, right? So you feel it and you're going like this and you feel your whole body kind of bounce back and forth like this. You're like, rawr, <laughs> right? It seems silly, but the minute you go from big to small, you start to sometimes understand your body a little bit more. So what we're gonna have our body do now is you're gonna bring your feet closer in. So now you're about shoulder, still outside of your hip, but your little bounce gets smaller, right? This was bigger, and then this is now smaller. So you're gonna keep doing this. You're about shoulder width now, instead of outside of your shoulders, okay? And I want you to maintain that bounce in your feet. Okay, it's really important for your feet to be able to absorb the energy of your body because that's what's gonna happen when you do your hip drops on top. Now, we're gonna take our feet and you're gonna bring it in just slightly and you're gonna have this little bounce. So see how my full body is still going? Okay, I'm not isolating, isolating any part of my body right now. I'm literally just getting this bounce going. Now, what I want you to do is gently push your hip down. And you might have this like, this kind of feeling, right? Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so I'm gonna gently try and push my hip down. I wanna stretch that side as I step onto that foot. So your side should feel stretched as you step on that foot and the hip should be coming down ever so slightly. Okay, now as you bring your feet closer in, I want you to keep pushing down. So as you keep pushing down and you bring your feet in, you start to get that movement. It's a funny way of doing it, but it gets you there. Now, if you see that your hips are generally in that motion, right, but you want more range and depth in your hip, take your hands, push as you push down and work. Okay, so we went from big movement and then we narrowed it back in. Super important. So let's go the whole process again. Five, six, seven, and bounce. Bounce, boom, boom. Bring the feet just closer into shoulder. Good, now drop the hip. You're gonna see maybe your torso pull a little bit away like this. You're gonna do your best to have your torso stay right where it is. So if you need to, hold your torso in place, right? So we went from bigger feet, smaller feet, push the hip down, now ensure the chest is where it needs to be. See the shallow? Down, down, down. It's not deep right now. Now, as you're holding your chest, right? Or holding your hips, you can push it down right here too. Bring your feet where it actually needs to be, then push further. Your feet echo what we did on the outside, that bounce, that give and take in the hip. Let's start big, full body. Bring it in just slightly. So you have to control it. It's very tiny, very controlled. Five, six, seven at the hip. Boom. Push the hip down, 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 down. Bring it, bring it in. Down, down, down. Now even further down, push, 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 push. Land on that foot, land on the foot. If you were to freeze frame, you're here in releve, right? Your hip is fully stretched. This side looks like it's being crunched in, but this side is being extended. If you were neutral, you'd be here, but we're down. See the difference? One more time, starting on the left. Five, six, seven, here we go and bounce. Bring it in. Add your hips and one, two, three, 
four, bring it in. One, two, push down. One, two, three, and push, push, push. Watch your posture. Engage your pelvic floor, don't forget. Yeah, nice. Now, if you're feeling comfortable and you can maintain this, let's travel. And back. So if you ever get lost and you're like, crap, and you need to reset, go from that big movement back into the small movement. Yeah, because sometimes it's hard to just transition from one into the next. Now, we're gonna go flat foot in place. Down, 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 down. Push, 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 push. Right before you have to go into releve, make sure you change your weight to that foot so you're prepped to the opposite side. Five, six, seven, here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to flat foot. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back. And one, you see how I changed the weight there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Other way, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and. Very nice job. So if you ever need to reset, go from that big and go in, right? And then you wanna practice. Do you know which muscles you're using? Get on the floor and push that hip down. And uh, on the contrary, or on the opposite side, you can also hip lift. So you can make sure you're activating uh, the muscles that you wanna be activating. So it's a good awareness exercise, right? And then make sure you understand what it means to push down, transfer that weight into that leg, right? Another way to practice is to make sure that you are going down is to actually put all your weight on one side and the weighted hip is the one that drop, 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 drop. Then you drop this side, drop, 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 drop. So when you go into the move, you understand how that feels. Does that make sense? Yeah, so there's multiple ways to get to it, but it's completely doable. I've seen some of my students go from, I don't even have a clue, into doing it. And then it's just sustaining it and drilling it into that position. You can totally do it, so just take it step by step. And remember, small changes over lots of time make the biggest impacts. So do it bit by bit as you go along, and you're totally gonna get it. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope this movement was helpful for you and the breakdown. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel if you're not already. Woo woo, woo woo. <laughs> so you can be aware of all the videos that I'm uploading. That would be awesome. Yeah. And if you haven't checked out my online classes already, make sure to do so. We got some fun stuff. And if you're not tired of this personality, you can get more. <laughs> Thanks so much and have a great day.